Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. In the previous two videos, I've been talking about this uh, amazing um, event in the Southern Hemisphere called the uh, Sudden Stratospheric Warming. In, um, and I think the mechanism, I believe what happened is because the, um, the Antarctic uh, sea ice, um, there is, if you look at the map, um, you can see some areas are, have much, much lower ice than the norm and other areas have much more ice than the norm. So this asymmetry in the ice, I believe it can cause an asymmetry in the polar vortex. And when there's an asymmetry or an elongation of the polar vortex, parts of it then cross the continent of Antarctica. And when they come across, the winds coming across up to, the, you know, on the East Antarctic, it's four kilometers high. And they ride over that and they have this vertical momentum. They go up into the stratosphere and uh, break the, uh, you know, cut into the polar vortex. And instead of one vortex, you can, it splits into two, even three different um, vortices. So I'll uh, continue to talk about some of the details on, on um, why this is happening and what it means for, um, for example, for um, Australia, what it means for New Zealand, what it means for the southern tip of South America, Patagonia. So this is a good article on the sudden stratospheric warming event above the South Pole to go down as the strongest on record. Okay, um, and this was from uh, September 10th, about a, a week or so ago. So, um, you know, this thing is still strengthening and it gives increased risk for southerlies in, to, in New Zealand in October, very, very cold events, lots of rain. Um, sudden, these events are rare in the Southern Hemisphere, only two in New Zealand in recorded times, one in September 2002 and the other in September 2010. Okay, uh, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology is predicting it as the strongest Antarctic warming. Um, and basically what that would do is uh, it, would give very, it would give a lack of rainfall, very, very dry conditions and very, very warm conditions in Australia, which is the last thing that they need because they've been going through those conditions, but those conditions can be exacerbated in the next few months. This is again showing the plot of temperature versus time and showing the, the rapid warming here. And, uh, okay, so there was a, a, a uh, image here, historical average and 20 historical maximum and what's happening this year. Okay, um, so that's a great article. Uh, here's another article in the news about Australia getting hot, hotter and drier because of this sudden stratospheric warming event. Okay, um, so, so this, is, um, this is the 2002 sudden stratospheric warming event. And uh, these areas were the lowest on record rainfall, very much below average. So the whole side of Eastern and a lot of Southern Australia had record dryness, you know, record lack of rainfall and very, very high temperatures in 2002 because of that event. So with the event this year being even uh, much, much stronger, um, then Australia is going to likely um, have very, very hot and dry weather, especially in these regions. We're going to see similar patterns like this occurring. And as I've said, I think I think these events happening is related to the asymmetry in the loss of, of uh, Antarctic sea ice. Okay, um, lots of information there. Another article, um, basically it's showing the same sort of thing. It's talking about the mountains and terrain in the Northern Hemisphere driving temperature contrast, driving vertical motion of air to cause these uh, sudden stratospheric warming events happening by uh, getting these major planetary waves, basically have it, giving them vertical um, momentum. And, you know, the Southern Hemisphere, cold Antarctic continent, relatively warm seas, so it leads to a stable circulation around Antarctica in general. But now because of the asymmetry in the sea ice, I believe, um, although that still needs to be hashed out and it will in scientific papers over the next few years, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. 
Um, it causes the, the winds in the stratosphere to reverse. Um, and uh, when it happened in the Northern Hemisphere in February 2018, it, it caused very cold temperatures um, in Europe and was dubbed the beast from the east. So in Australia, it's going to cause cold temperatures in New Zealand and very, very warm temperatures above the north of the jet streams in, um, in uh, Australia. Okay, so another excellent article. Um, now this is, now the ozone hole, the o, you need very, very cold temperatures for the ozone destruction, but because of the warming of the stratosphere, the ozone destruction is greatly reduced. So this year's um, ozone hole is decreasing in size and will continue to do so. Um, this was September 9th, so 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, it decreased, and then the hole will increase in size. Okay, but the current expectation is that the 2019 ozone hole could have the smallest area of any Antarctic ozone hole since the mid 80s, and that's just because the atmosphere is up high, the, the stratosphere is warming so much, the chemical reactions that destroy ozone can occur, cannot occur, so the ozone hole gets very, very small. Okay, and then, um, you know, when, and then it's not saying that ozone is recovering, the ozone hole is recovering, it's saying that basically this phenomenon disrupts the destruction of ozone. Okay, there's lots of images. This is uh, showing the, uh, this is the area of the ozone hole compared to other holes since 2003. So you can see these other ozone, this is the millions of square kilometers. Okay, so it reaches over time, July through December, and you can see the size, the ozone hole getting larger and larger and maintaining its level here, for example, in 2018. Um, and here we are in 2019. You know, very, very small ozone hole, and this is the forecast here. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, very interesting. Um, more information on the uh, Copernicus program, the Atmospheric Monitoring Service, Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service, CAMS. Okay, um, lots of images of the ozone hole. Again, this image here, this is the ozone hole area in 2019 and the forecast. And, uh, you know, lots of, here, here's a view, Antarctica, you know, the ozone levels. Um, you know, this is ozone here, and there's a hole here which is generally developed, but not so much uh, this year. Okay, um, now there's pa a lot of papers on the 2002 event. Okay, so um, the principal result is the fact that as the polar vortex elongated, okay, in the southern hem hemisphere over Antarctica, it became hydrodynamically unstable because parts of it went over high elevation areas of Antarctic. This instability affected the upper troposphere and stratosphere. So it basically drove uh, warm air from the troposphere up into the stratosphere. That in turn drove cold air from the stratosphere down to the troposphere. Um, so an affected weather on, on the surface. Um, during the uh, sudden stratospheric warming, the middle stratospheric vortex, that's at 10 millibars, split it into two pieces. One piece mixed with extra vortex air, the other return to the pole is a much weaker and smaller vortex, okay? Um, and basically, um, and it had gave unusual behavior to the ozone hole in 2002, which we're also seeing now, okay? So what's the lesson for the unprecedented event over Antarctica? Well, we have an even more unprecedented event in uh, 2019. Um, strong planetary waves propagated um, over. Okay, okay, this is a, an interesting paper. So first of all, you know, the Antarctic stratospheric sudden warming of 2002, a self-tuned resonance. Okay, um, so basically there was a, there was huge, uh, remarkable vertical structure. The vortex divided at upper levels in the stratosphere, but not at lower levels. Such partially split vortex events are relatively rare. You know, planetary waves excited. Uh, there has to be a vertical momentum 
of the hot air to go up into the vortex to split it. So this is a really fascinating figure here because this is, um, so this is 2002 event. So this is uh, 5th of September. You can see the vortex is here extending down into the atmosphere, down towards the surface of Antarctica. 23rd of September, it starts to split, okay, into two vortices. And then these vortices peel off and separate. And then this guy curves around. So this is the actual measurement, the observations. And this is a model where you start with something like this, and then it splits into two. And, and uh, you know, so the model does capture a lot of the main features of, of uh, the actual observations of this event. Uh, what else does this show? Um, yeah, it, it basically talks about the frequency of, of, of splitting and the modes and so on, the behavior of the one vortice splitting into, into uh, two vortices. Um, unusual stratospheric transport and mixing. Okay. Uh, so this is showing the, yeah, so this is showing the zonal winds. We've got westerly winds getting stronger and stronger, and then suddenly they decrease and they go to easterly. Um, and this is at 60 degrees south at 10 hexapascals high up in the atmosphere. So this is a sign of the sudden stratospheric warming event. And this is a heat flux going up into the atmosphere. So you can see a drop off here, the winds reverse and huge amounts of heat go up into the into the atmosphere. Um, okay, and what else do we have? Unusual midwinter warming of the southern, southern hemisphere stratosphere compares it to northern hemisphere um, event. So, you know, it talks about um, basically looked at 50 Arctic winters. These events occur quite frequently, but in the southern hemisphere, There'd be nothing since the 1940s, and then in 2002, there was a very strong event, unprecedented at that time. And now in 2019, there's an even stronger event. And the concern is that as climate change continues, as it accelerates and we lose Antarctic sea ice in an asymmetric fashion, that these events will start happening more and more often. So remember, you know, if you go, if you, if you Google Arctic sea ice graphs and you click on the National Snow and Ice Data Center um, image, then, then uh, taking a while to load. Here we go, click on Arctic sea ice extent, and then you can just scroll through here. So you can see the image here, and I think this is the key factor, ice missing here, extra ice here. Um, over here, it's, there, there's some extra ice here, and then there's a loss, you know, less and less. Like, it's a bit of more of a mishmash over here, but over here, it's pretty clear. There's extra ice here, and there's a loss here. I think this might have been enough to cause an asymmetry in the polar vortex, bringing parts of it over the Antarctica, where the terrain is uh, very, very high on East Antarctica. Okay, and then basically that um, caused the, the vertical motion, caused that warm air to go up into the um, stratosphere, um, disrupted completely the ozone destruction, and basically it caused the, the uh, jet streams to, I think that's sort of, yeah, that's the last image, basically caused the um, jet streams to, um, to become much wavier and head north. So it brought very cold weather here over South America and over New Zealand. And then a bit further up in Australia, uh, basically that was north of the jet stream extent. So the very, 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 very hot, um, very, very hot conditions and very, very dry conditions expected over Australia as this as this guy develops more. I mean, this is pretty phenomenal, you know, all over zero degrees Celsius, and we're up at uh, 10 hexapascals. We're very, very high up in the, in the um, stratosphere. So we can cycle through, you know, three hour increments, and you can see how it, how it changes, how the position changes, and then it's disappearing, you know, and we'll cycle back. 
and you can see it growing. Anyway, thank you for listening. I've learned a lot. Bye for now.